All right, I, uh, I think we can get started. Uh, welcome, uh, everybody, to the uh, MLC's webinar uh, on the Data Quality Initiative. Um, and in particular, um, this, data, this webinar is focused on uh, users of Vistex Music Maestro uh, system. Um, so in terms of our agenda, we'll start with some uh, quick introductions to the presenters. Um, we will then run through uh, essentially what sort of the, the, the purpose of the DQI is, what it is that we are trying to achieve, what it is that we're hoping to help everybody with. Um, we'll then talk a little bit about sort of the principles um, and, and approaches to the, to the DQI. Um, we'll then provide uh, a quick sort of demonstration of how to actually uh, run the DQI functionality that exists uh, within the Music Maestro uh, platform. We'll then move on to what you, you know, what, what the results of the DQI process look like and, and how you will hopefully get some value from them um, before moving on to a quick section on next steps. Um, and then finishing, uh, I, I hope we'll probably have about 15 or 20 minutes for, for any questions. Um, there is a Q&A um, function within, within Zoom. Um, so if you do have any questions, please do type them into the uh, Q&A box. And we will uh, do our best to get to as many as we can uh, as we get towards the end uh, of the hour. But just moving into introductions, we have three people uh, presenting today's webinar. Um, my name is Richard Thompson. Uh, I'm the CIO uh, of the MLC. I've been working on the uh, uh, with the MLC for about 18 months now. Uh, so even before we were designated um, just over 12 months ago. Uh, joining me today we have uh, the gentleman I know is M Mr Music Maestro uh, from, from Vistex, uh, Stephen Carlyle, uh, who uh, is hugely knowledgeable in all things uh, Music Maestro and, and we'll be taking us through that section uh, of the webinar. Uh, and then following Stephen will be my colleague uh, Raphael, um, who will be talking a little bit about the outputs uh, that uh, you can receive from the, uh, from, from the DQI. Um, the best place uh, to reach certainly either either myself or, or RAF uh, is, is the data.quality email address, data.quality, the mlc.com, which uh, I, th I think probably some of you are already familiar with. Um, I, I, uh, I, and if needed, we can of course uh, put you in touch with, uh, with Stephen or Stephen can uh, do that himself when he, uh, when he speaks. Just before we go any further, um, I do just want to highlight that we are running a series of webinars uh, and I do this really just to make sure that the people we have on this call are, are at the right webinar. Um, you are of course very welcome to stay if you decide this is not the right webinar for you, um, but uh, it may be that you get more value out of one of the other webinars if it is more suited to your particular uh, situation. So uh, last Wednesday, we ran a webinar for um, sort of publishers and administrators, representatives of musical works who are using their own in-house or proprietary IT systems uh, to manage their data on musical works uh, and who wanted to participate um, in the DQI. If that is a better description of you than a music maestro user, uh, the recording of that uh, is available on request. You can get that from the data.quality at the mlc.com. Uh, if, you, if you email us, we'll be happy to share the link to that uh, recording. Alternatively, uh, again, if, you, if you're not a Music Maestro user, but perhaps you're using something like Excel or Google Sheets or some other um, software package like that to manage your catalogue of musical works, next Wednesday might be the webinar from which you, uh, from which you get the most value. Um, so, uh, as I say, you're, you're, you're very welcome to stay, just uh, want to spend your time in the most productive way possible. Uh, and also, uh, if you will forgive me for a moment, I just want to do a quick plug uh, on some webinars that uh, the MLC will be doing uh, starting in the next few, in the next few weeks. Uh, in particular, there is a webinar series uh, targeted at trying to sort of help self-administered songwriters and in, in terms of how they can get the most 
uh, from the MLC. Um, details of that and many other things uh, are available uh, if you sign up to our mailing list uh, at the MLC.com. Um, and there are monthly newsletters on what the MLC is up to uh, going out from that uh, from that mailing list. So please please do go and sign up. So with the introductions done, uh, let's dive into the uh, the uh, the meat of today's uh, today's presentation. So the fundamental purpose of the DQI. What what are we trying to achieve? So I would suggest that one of the key functions, if not the key function, um, of any publisher or administrator or, or entity administering or representing musical works is to ensure that those musical works are correctly registered at the CMOs and, and similar organisations from whom they collect royalties uh, on behalf of the songwriters. Um, so as part of making sure that those works are correctly registered, um, you know, the key question is, are, are my works correctly registered? And that actually breaks down into a number of questions below that. There are a number of different ways that you can think about wanting to understand whether your works are correctly registered. First and foremost, is the payable percentage correct? Um, so, you know, if, if I think, for example, that I represent 75% of a work, um, but the uh, a CMO thinks I only represent 25% of that, of that work, then no, I don't think that work is correctly registered. That is, that is clearly a problem. That is something that needs to be addressed. Similarly, uh, wanting to make sure all of the writers are listed and listed correctly um, is a key facet of making sure that uh, a registration is correct. Um, if there is an ISWC for the work, has that been registered and is that present on the work? Um, and, and so on and so forth. This is not a this is not an exhaustive list, but th there are many dimensions um, to wanting to ensure that a, uh, a work is correctly registered uh, at a CMO or, or, or similar body. But that is not an easy process um, because um, I, I would say typically uh, at most, if, if not all CMOs, there isn't a particularly effective or efficient or streamlined way to run a comparison between the works that are held in your database for, for, for today, the works held within Music Maestro and the works, uh, the view of the works as, as held at the CMO. Um, so, you know, I know many publishers spend a lot of time and effort manually checking work registrations. You might send a CWR file off, you get an acknowledgement back, you wait a few weeks and then you want to do a double check uh, to make sure that the work has been correctly registered. Or maybe you do that after 12 months or 24 months or, or, or what have you. But that at the moment has to be done in, in quite a manual way. Um, and clearly that is, you know, time consuming and inefficient. So the, the DQI is, is fundamentally designed to give you a streamlined way to compare the data that you have in your Music Maestro system with the data that the MLC has um, in its Musical Works database. Um, and, and, that, and then to report back to you and particularly highlight the discrepancies. So tell you where things do not match. So to my earlier example, if I think I represent 75% of the work, but the MLC slash HFA database, data, database excuse me, says 25% of the work, that is a discrepancy. And that is something that the DQI will tell you about. And it will provide you, you know, as much information as it can to help you understand what that discrepancy is so that you can investigate it. What the DQI unfortunately can't do is tell you what the right outcome is there. So in, in my 75%, 25% example, there is clearly an inconsistency, but the, the, the DQI, the, a computer system, cannot tell you why that, existen that, that inconsistency exists or, or which of those is correct. Um, maybe the 75% is correct, maybe the 25% is correct. It's actually also possible that neither are correct. Um, and, and that much we cannot do. So what, what we can do is tell you where the discrepancies exist, but we can't fix them for you. Um, that is something that you will need to invest some time and effort in. Um, and you may have seen the, the, the MLC is uh, uh, sort of one of our taglines at the moment is play your part. And we, we really do need you to play your part um, in helping us um, find and fix uh, any discrepancies that exist between you know, your view of your musical works repertoire and the MLC slash HFA view 
uh, of that repertoire. So that's the sort of three or four minute overview of the GQI and, and what it is and why it exists. Um, but I just want to layer some more, some more detail onto that um, in terms of, I think, some sort of important principles um, in terms of how the, uh, how, how the DQI works. So firstly, as we were thinking about sort of designing the DQI, it was very clear that it needed to be able to run at scale. Um, to date, we have now run over 12 million uh, discrepancy comparisons on a work by work basis. So we've had 12 million requests um, for, uh, for, for comparison between, you know, a, a publisher's system and the, and the MLC slash HFA database. Um, and that number is, of course, rising uh, every day. And I think by the time we are, we are done, if we are ever done, you know, that, that, could, that, that will be in the many tens of millions, uh, if not into hundreds. So the GQI is very much intended to run at scale. There will be, I dare say, publishers and administrators on this call who have catalogues of upwards of 100,000 works, maybe even getting into a million works. That is not a problem at all. We are very happy to deal with that volume. The DQI is, 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 is very, very good at dealing with scale. We can compare a catalogue of a million works uh, in about eight hours. Um, so if you want to send your entire catalogue to us for checking, that is absolutely fine. Conversely, um, and it's worth saying at this point, we, we have, we, we've been running sort of a, a pilot phase um, before we made the public announcements and there were uh, uh, two or three um, Music Maestro users in that, in that pilot programme. But there were also there were, there were also some some uh, people with their own proprietary systems in that in that pilot program, and different people have taken different approaches to how they want to go about running these comparison reports um, and then and then dealing with them. Some publishers have just sent us their entire catalogue of upwards of a million works uh, and got the response and are starting to work through it that way. Other publishers administrators have been a bit more tactical and said, "I'd like to check this specific catalogue." because I acquired it from somebody else a few months ago and I don't know what state it's in. Um, so I'd like to focus on this catalog. Other people said, I'm gonna send you my top 10 or 20% of works and focus my effort there. Um, from, the, from, from our point of view, from the DQI's point of view, any of those approaches are equally valid. Um, you know, I, I would say it's up, it's up to you um, uh, as the publishers and administrators uh, to figure out which approach makes most sense for you um, because you know as I said a moment ago you, you will need to put some effort in, into looking at the discrepancy report that you get back uh, and taking the appropriate action uh, to fix the discrepancies that it uh, that it comes up so um, you know it, it, and, and clearly you know there, there will be publishers of many different shapes and sizes on this call so there, there is not a one-size-fits-all answer to that question um, you know, I think do, do whatever makes most, most sense for you. Another key design principle, the, 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 the DQI process is, 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 is repeatable. Um, the DQI is, is able to run in an entirely automated fashion, uh, if that is how people want to interact with it. Um, so again, people in the pilot program um, were, were using it in different ways. Some people were using it in, in the fully automated manner where they were sending files over to us, we processed the files and we sent them straight back and then they were working on the feedback like that. Um, some people were sending us files on a weekly basis, so they're doing it on an ad hoc basis. But the, the, the key principle is um, you can throw, you know, throw as many files for checking at us as you like um, and we can just keep responding to them easily. But because it's repeatable, and particularly for larger catalogues, um, I think the people in the pilot program found it was helpful actually to, to do it in an iterative way. So you get a report back, maybe you fix 10 or 20% of the issues on the report, and then you, and then you do it again. And clearly the, you know, the, the, the discrepancy report that comes back uh, will have shrunk. But that's also helpful because what the people in the pilot program found was quite often you look at an issue and it appears to be one work, but actually, uh, what it does is it unearth maybe an issue at the catalogue level. So, you, you know, you, you find what appears to be a single issue and then that, re, you know, all of a sudden you realise that there is a catalogue of 100 works where, I don't know, perhaps the letter of direction wasn't sent or didn't get processed properly or wasn't transferred properly or, uh, or, or, or what have you or, you know, any, any number of reasons or, or things that could have occurred uh, um, to, to, to mean that, you know, perhaps a catalogue transfer didn't happen properly. 
So, um, you know, a, a, actually by, by looking at a single issue, you can unearth a problem with, uh, with, with a considerable number of works. Um, and, and again, the sort of iterate, you know, the, the, the DQI allows you to take a very iterative approach to working through your, you know, your discrepancies systematically, um, knocking, a, knocking a few out and then repeating the process uh, with a cleaner list. Um, and similarly, you know, the, the DQI is here for the long term. So again, so some of the people in the pilot program are looking at baking this into their workflows. Um, so that you know, a month or so after they receive a CWR acknowledgement uh, from uh, HFA, um, they then will will send a, a file to the DQI to double check those CWR registrations, you know, worked as intended, um, and to make sure that uh, you know nothing strange had happened. Um, and again, because it's fully automated and because it's very easily repeatable. Uh, that is uh, that is something that people are beginning to get uh, to get value out of. We very much wanted to focus on accessibility, so I've already spoken. You know, the, the, the DQI is intended for people with their own proprietary technology systems, for people with data in Excel, Google, what have you, and of course, relevant to this call, um, to uh, people that are using third-party technology platforms such as such as Music Maestro. Um, so, you know, we we have been uh, working with Vistex for a number of months now. Uh, on uh, you know in, in incorporating them into the initiative and, and their help and support with it is is very much appreciated. Um, and then another key principle: when we're talking about data quality, we have to be accurate. So the uh, the data quality initiative uh, exclusively relies on identifier matching. We do not do any string matching because string matching by its nature is, is imprecise. There will be inevitably a sort of error rate that is introduced as soon as you start doing string matching. So we don't do it. So the two identifiers that we rely on are the, the HFA song code, which is the same thing as the MLC song code. Uh, on our, on our, our portal, when it launches, you will see it described as the MLC song code. Um, obviously, you already know it as the HFA song code. We have tried to make that terminology as accessible as possible. Um, so, you know, that, that is the first identifier that we rely on. Um, or alternatively, we're perfectly capable of working on the ISWC as well. Uh, either or both of those are, are, are very helpful to us um, in terms of locating the works in the HFA slash MLC, uh, MLC database. And uh, Raf will talk about this in a little more detail um, once Stephen has been uh, done sort of the music maestro demo. Um, but the, the uh, another sort of key design principle, the, the, the output report that I've talked about that, that you get back, um, which uh, describes the discrepancies that exist between you know your view of the world and the MLC view of the world. Um, as a, as a design principle, that is very much intended to be actionable information. We do as much as we possibly can to try to describe to you what the problem or problems are so that you can do something with them um, and that you can you can work on resolving them um, in whatever way is appropriate. You know, in, in some cases that may mean relinquishing a work, in some cases that may mean resending a work registration, in other cases, excuse me, uh, that might mean looking into a, a, you know, a catalogue level issue or, or what have you but we do our very best to um, provide actionable information. It's also, um, the, the report is both computer and human readable. So it is a, a tab delimited format. So if you have some computer system that you want to be able to read it and you want to process it that way uh, with some code or import it into a database, you can do that. Uh, alternatively, because it's tab separated, it opens very nicely in Excel and you can just use the filter function in Excel to uh, find the information that is uh, that, that you want to look at. Um, so uh, again, we wanted to make the uh, the output report as accessible as possible. And before I hand over to Stephen, um, I just want to sort of note again, so that there can be no uh, doubt or confusion, that the, participating in, in the DQI and sending files to the DQI tool uh, is not a work registration. 
it is a re it is a request for comparison uh, of your data set against the MLC's data set. Um, so you should you know continue to use whatever works registration mechanism you were using before. I would guess for many people on this webinar that will be CWR. Um, so so yeah, just carry on what you were doing there. Um, the, the DQI is not a not a work registration, so hopefully that is that is clear. Okay, now we have been through the uh, the overview and some of the sort of principles of, of the DQI. Let, let's get down to a little bit more detail on how it works in practice. Uh, and at this point, I will hand you over to to Stephen. Okay, hello everybody. Um, can you just go on to the next um, slide, please? Cool. All right. So, um, so I'm just going to go through. I'm going actually going to show you Music Maestro and show you what you will need to to do. So I'm going to go through all of these points. Um, so, firstly, you need to be on um, 8.3.6 or above. So you need to plan that in as part of your your project. And then there's a number of things you've got to do before you do it. So you've got there's a script you've got to run. You've got to do some linking of the US society sources, you've got to create your profiles, and then you've got to only at that point are you ready to actually run um, run the export. So what I will do now is, uh, oh, so, um, if you stop sharing I need now, to stop sharing, don't I, so that I you can go, share all yours. Go on to my screen. So you should now be able to see, uh, hold on one second. Right, so you should be able to see um, Music Maestro. Is that there, Richard? Yep, I can see Music Maestro, yep. Cool. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so you need to be on 836. Um, so first thing you want to do is run this thing, this, this script we've, we've built within the custom scripts area. So what it is, is um, an update script. Um, so that supervisor, within the supervisor menu, there's an area you can run various scripts. So one of the things about the, um, the, the, the export is it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not got the same kind of validation in, as you have in CWR. So the idea is your, your catalog does not have to be CWR compliant for it to go out. So there's none of that validation, none of those rules. So you, you don't need to go kind of go back and try and make all your old catalog um, CWR compliant if it isn't in the first place. But what that means is that we need to make sure there's no um, invalid characters in the export that, that, corrupt, that could corrupt it. And what I'm talking about with illegal characters, I mean things like if you've copied and pasted something into um, some, something and it's got a tab in it or a line feed or something like that, anything like that will, will potentially corrupt the corrupt the export um, and it would be picked up if you're doing CWR as an as, as invalid but there's not going to be any any um, any kind of validation within within the, the, the export because the idea is it, it is a, a way of exporting your catalogue without you having to go through all the effort of, of, of making it CWR compatible and generating CWR files. So it's important that you do this as your first step because if you don't your output could be corrupt and will be rejected um, the MLC. So that's your first thing you've got to do. And then you've got to tell Music Maestro which sources it needs to export the work numbers for. So what we're looking for is for you to link your US um, PROs, the sources you use for them, to the relevant CWR society. You see here I've got something called HFA, I've gone into my CWR tab and I've linked it to Harry Fox. Um, of course, you could have more than one. So if you've got various different sources that you use for Harry Fox, um, then all of those need to be linked in. So you need to make sure they're all linked in. So I've got HFA and I've got Harry Fox. Or alternatively, you can use the right click um, copy work numbers option to copy everything into one, one source if you want to do that. Could you also do, just for information purposes, if you could do the other US um, PROs as well, so that they've got the full, the full range of identifiers um, for the US um, um, for the US societies. Okay, so that's your second um, setup. Then, to, to as Richard was saying, people have different. You know, the, the, 
it's it's designed so that you can use it in a kind of focused way so that the way the export works is all based on profiles so the first thing you've got to do is work out how you want to split your catalog down and that's the way you've selected your songs is using profiles so i think that most people will be familiar using with using profiles because you use them it's the same as you use for bulk amendments or catalog shipment or common works registration but if you're not familiar with profiles then there's a user guide to them um, and so I've set one up here um, so I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about profiles because you should um, assuming you've used them anyway um, mine is just a simple song couple of songs in a song list one thing I would just point out that you might or might not be aware of is that you can filter it by income status so one of the possibilities you've got here is to is to, is to filter at, filtered just by songs that have earned royalties so one thing you could do is focus on on just the songs that have ever earned royalties as your maybe as your first step um, you can also think about using the top earners um, report maybe to get a song list of your top of your top songs and again you could then put that into the into the profile and you could use that so that's another way that you could um, you could kind of focus a bit on using your maybe your top clients or your top songs um, into that so I've got um, and one thing as well within this there's an option here you might want to use that it's this create song list for profile actually does a little bit of validation very basic validation of percentages so you might want to run that and just have a quick check that your data at least basic data is is okay um, you can of course run CWR validation as well if you want to do a bit of a, a bit of a check anyway so I've just got two songs um, so I've got song here and this one is a actually um, uh, sub-published in the USA. Okay, so this is a so obviously what the MLC are looking for is the US view. All right, so they don't care about whatever other territories. So you've got to you've got to um, so they're only interested in that. So I've got a song here that where it's the USA you want, and another song here where it's um, US 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 and Canada. So when I show you the selection in a, in, a, in a second, it's important that you you select the correct territory or territories, so that the correct information is exported. Because it's it's not a territory specific. It's not sorry that that's the export does not include territory information. You have to have filtered it already to the US. Okay, um, the information exported um, includes the international standard work code. All right, so that's the identifier for the work. That was one of the questions in the Q&A. Then it will also include um, your recording information. So I've got it, uh, um, the identifier, the ISRC for the recording, various other bits of information there. So that will also, um, that will also go out onto the file. And then the export is pretty, pretty straightforward. You just go to your reports and you go to your custom reports. And right at the bottom, there's this new option here, um, mechanical licensing collective JSON export. JSON is the is the technical name of the of the, the way it's formatted, so you don't need to worry particularly about that. Um, so I just pick my find my um, profile, and you could just be sending you the information. So if it, if, it, if it's a US catalog you can just use the originating territory but as i said before it's important when i'm doing my selection to pick all of the all of the things that i use for for the for the usa okay so in my case as you saw on the two songs i've got um i'm actually using us and canada and usa so i just need to pick from this list all of the ones that i use on my songs Okay, so it could be as simple as using always being the originating territory, or it could be a list of different territories. So I just click on OK, and it will just give me the option, and I can save that to wherever I want to go, and it will it will create it, um, and then you will send that off. So Raphael will go in the next the next um, section about how how that's going to go. But I'll just show you just for your information. You don't need to you know worry you know if you know about this but this is this is the data anyway so um it's a text file with some information about who you are and this is actually taken from your cwr um this is the cwr sender 
then it's got some information about the song, so it's got the ISWC and so on. So this is just a, a, a text file with all of that in. If you are, you know, if you do want to have a look at it, it's easier to look at it if you use a JSON parser like this, but that's probably more detail than you need to know. Um, but you can see it's just got your identifier for the societies, then it's got all your, your composers, uh, then it has uh, details of the original publishers and the um, administrators or sub-publishers and their collection shares. Uh, and then it has all of the recording information and it has things like um, alternate titles. Um, so that is the, that is how to um, prepare the database. So as I said, it's important to do that deletion. It's important to do that linking. You have to create the profile and then you really important as well to make sure you know which um, territories are used to represent USA on that uh, song CWR IP view and make sure that all of those are included um, so that the correct territory is, is sent on the file because as I said it's not multi-territory the, so the, the, the interested party information is just of the territory that you select. Okay so I will um, stop sharing my screen. Thank you uh, Stephen. So let's go back here and we, uh, in fact, Raf, do you want to, do you want to take over at this point? Uh, yeah, can do. Uh, so let me share my screen. Oh, are you screen sharing? Uh, I, I can do, I can do. Okay. There now. Right, so um, Stephen has explained how to extract data of your counterpoint system, but obviously now you might want to send it to the MLC. Um, so to do that, the, there is, uh, you can use one of two ways. Um, you can use a, a SFTP, which is our preferred mechanism to, to receive the data, um, especially as the files can be quite large. If the files are small enough, you can also use email. But really, for, for anything larger than 10,000 10, words, we really recommend um, using SFTP, but also um, breaking down the works into smaller batches. And I, I don't know if that's something um, Stephen demonstrated earlier, but um, I think um, fr from my, my limited knowledge of Music Maestro, it's, it's something that can be done. Um, so now that you've delivered data to the MLC, you might want to receive a report. Um, so uh, the, the reports that we produce um, consist of two files essentially for each group of files um, delivered to us. One which is a summary report which lists each issue is detected and how many times each issue has occurred and um, another more detailed report which is very much actionable um, which lists uh, detailed um, information about the issues for each work. Um, on, on some occasions we might also provide additional information that will help with the resolution of, of those issues so again the idea being that we provide um, publishers and various rights holder with as much information as we can to help them resolve those issues. Um, and and the, the, the format of the reports are actually quite simple. They're in tab separated values format, um, which means that they can be computer readable. They can also be opened in Excel or Google Sheet and be reviewed by, by human if that's, that's easier. So again, try, trying to make things accessible. Um, so he here are some of the key data points that, that we're trying to capture and, and that list is by all means non-exhaustive. Um, this is something that we're regularly evolving so it's, it's really important that this becomes a continuous process and not a, a one-off. Um, we, we're also very much interested in your feedback and seeing what is useful to you to see as what could be an issue. So. Um, if you have any particular requests, we're happy to discuss them and try to accommodate them. But 
currently what we're looking at is, um, for example, if collection shares do not match. Um, so you supply to us a, a collectible share, we compare it with the data in our database, it doesn't match. Um, and, and we try to break it down in various use cases which might have different resolutions. So, for example, if the HFA share is zero, which means that um, your share of the work is actually not registered. Um, if the HFA share is greater than the supply share or the supply share is, is uh, greater than the HFA share, which may point at um, di different, different potential issues and different way of resolving them. Um, another data point that we look at is um, the number of writers on the data supplied versus the um, data that is held in our database. Um, if, it's, if it's different, it might point to potential uh, more fundamental issues. And um, again, this will need to be resolved uh, and in, in, in a number of ways, typically by resending registration. Um, we, we were also providing um, uh, um, um, validation around all the international standard codes they can supply. So IPI name number, ISWC or HFA song code. And that might not be as relevant for Music Maestro users because um, the, the system already does a good job of preventing you from entering invalid data in the relevant fields. Um, it, it's something that we, we, we're doing um, as part of the general DQI tool. Um, other data, data points um, that we look at, if for example, you're providing multiple ASWCs or multiple um, HFA slash MLC song codes, they might sometimes refer to different work. So what we like to do is give you each, each of the works that those codes relate to in, the, um, in, our, in our database. And, and let you decide whether they're duplicates or whether they're potentially incorrect matches. Um, but but we, we provide you with all the data. Um, in addition to, to um, highlighting issues and comparing the data, and I know there was a question around that in the Q&A, um, we're also trying to provide additional data where we've got it available. So we're, we're trying to augment your data. Um, so for example, um, if uh, you only supply a, a, an HFA slash MLC song code, um, we will try to provide the corresponding ASWC if we have it available. Um, similarly, if you only supply an ASWC, which is possible for different formats, um, we, we will provide you with the corresponding HFA on code. Uh, and um, in a similar vein, um, when works are merged, um, you, you may end up with an archived ISWC or an archived HFA slash MLC on code. So we will provide you with the primary one or the preferred one. Um, and um, which leads us to next steps and how to get involved. So, um, do you want to take over, Rich? Uh, sure, do you want to just press down a couple of times so we get the content of the slide? Uh, so, uh, as Raf has said, the, the, the DQI, um, you know, we, through, through the pilot phase, we have got an awful lot of feedback and suggestions and, and, and built improvements into the DQI already. Um, but to the extent that uh, anybody has any suggestions for new validations or how we can make the output more helpful or anything else that we can do to help you, um, you know, improve the quality of, of, of the data in either your database or the, or the MLC database, we'd, we'd love to hear any, any, any suggestions uh, on any of those things, validations, outputs, just general process, uh, what have you. So please don't be shy in, uh, in providing feedback, uh, feedback to us. Uh, next slide, please, please, please Raf. Um, so, how, how do you play your part? Uh, if you have questions, are you ready to test? Are you already running through the procedure that Stephen described and eagerly downloading a file from your Music Maestro system? Hopefully you are. Um, the, uh, Stephen has uh, provided a link there. We will send an email to all of the participants on the webinar 
uh, at the end and we will include that, uh, that link in it. Um, so there is uh, some, um, some, some help there that uh, Vistex have, have supplied. Uh, as Stephen said, you may need to update uh, your Music Maestro to, uh, was it 835 or above, Stephen? It's 836 or above. Apologies, 8, 836 or above. Um, but fundamentally, if you, as I say, if you, if you have questions or you're ready to go or, or what have you, uh, drop us a line at uh, data.quality at mlc.com and we can either help you get set up on SFTP or we can help you start testing or we can do uh, whatever it is that, uh, that uh, we need to do to, uh, to help get you going. Uh, so please do not be shy at, uh, at reaching out to us. Uh, we are here to help. So hopefully uh, that was helpful to uh, everybody. Um, I, it's also worth noting that a recording of this webinar uh, will, we can be happy to provide that to uh, anybody uh, that would like it, particularly if they want to sort of review Stephen's section uh, again. Uh, again, as ever, email us at data.quality at the mlc.com and we'll happily send you the link to the, to, to the webinar just as soon as we have it. Um, so let's move on to some questions and there are, there, are, there are quite a few. So I will start at roughly the top and, uh, and, and work my way down. There are a few questions around sort of the, the topic of work registrations um, and I guess the interaction with HFA and, and sort of that topic. So I will, I will attempt to sort of answer those uh, holistically. So ho hopefully I will hit all of the questions um, in, in, in doing so. So um, for, for, for HFA and the MLC will be accessing the same database uh, on, on an ongoing basis. So to, to answer one of the questions that there is no cutover point at which you need to stop sending registrations to HFA and start sending to the MLC or anything like that, just continue to send registrations, at least for in, in the short to medium term, continue to send registrations to, to HFA. Um, and uh, they, the, the, the MLC, by, by virtue of the fact that we are accessing the same database, um, will we'll, we'll see them just as soon as HFA sees them. Um, so uh, I think that then also sort of deals with there was a question around credentials, but uh, you know you, the, the, there are no so certainly uh, in the short term or uh, probably through to the medium term uh, there are no uh, new credentials or anything like that that you need in order to start sending um, work uh, getting your registrations through to the MLC. We, we will pick them up uh, as part of your HFA registrations. Um, so I, I say I, I think that answers uh, a few of the questions uh, on that topic. Um, uh, a, a similar question, but for RAF for SFTP delivery, how can we get set up? Do you want to do you want to take that one, RAF? Sure, sure, sure. Um, it really is again just a question of emailing us at data.quality@dmlc.com. Um, all you need to do is provide us with an SSH. Um, public key and we, and we can set you up pretty quickly. Um, I can provide more details around how to create that public key and, and the, the whole SFTP process, how, how to use it. Um, it, it. It sounds complicated, it's not that complicated. Um, and in the meantime, if you want to get going on the testing, um, e email could work as well. Thanks, Raf. Um, uh, while we're on the subject of FTP, maybe let's remain there for a moment. There was a question from Mark. Is the output file returned via the method submitted? For example, if submitting via SFTP, will it be returned via SFTP? Uh, uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, it's, it's, um, yeah, the, the, the reports are automatically uploaded to the SFTP. Um, that, that, that's why it's really our preferred way of setting things up. Um, e email is a bit more convoluted to, to return those reports back to, to, to you. Um, so uh, yes, um, if, if, if you supply the data through SFTP, we will return it um, on, the SFT, on the same SFTP server. Um, and I think this also is relevant to a question from, from Melanie. 
um, in terms of how long after sending the you know sending the DQI out uh, export do do we get the output report and is it fair to say Raf that again if you're using SFTP you will get the um, the output report very quickly because it will just be placed on the SFTP server as soon as it's ready whereas if you are submitting via email then some a human will need to pick up the file drop it in the right place wait for it to be processed pick it up and send it back in an email to you that's that, right yes um, yeah. the, the, the process is a lot more um, <laughs> at the risk of, of not sounding very nice it's human intensive um, we like to use computers <laughs> which is why we prefer people to use uh, the SFTP method because yeah it, you know there, there is there is it's quicker for you and it's less 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 effort for us so it's it's but, but better all round which is why we're, we're encouraging people to use uh, SFTP um, but in terms of, of turnaround uh, on the output report I think I think we said a so big way we, we've turned around files of over a million works in under eight hours so you know it, it, fairly quickly uh, is the answer. Uh, forgive me. Uh, I don't. I don't know how big your catalog is. The, the person that asked that question, but you know, we we can turn around most requests within a within an hour or two. Um, you really do need to be throwing a a, a very considerable number of work setters for it to take uh, longer than that. Um, what else do we have on here? Um, there is a question here uh, from John. Can you confirm that the MLC HFA song card has no relation to ASCAP's ISWC regional issuing agency so-called song code? Um, I think the answer to that is yes, um, but I, I will be honest, I am not familiar with ASCAP's, how ASCAP, um, issues ISWCs or, or exactly what is happening at ASCAP there so I'm, I'm fairly confident in, in saying yes there is no particular relationship there not least because the HFA song code is, is a proprietary identifier that HFA slash the MLC put put against works so you know it, it is their unique identifier so it seems highly unlikely that it would be the same as ASCAP's uh, unique identifier so um, hopefully that is that one um, just give me a moment to see what else we have on here. There are a few questions around not having song IDs and using ISWCs, um, which which I can try to answer um, in, sure. in in a bulk way. Um, so uh, the, the the truth is the HFA song code is our primary mechanism to identify works in our database. Um, if if they're not there, we we can use ISWC, but to the extent that they are in the um, HFA slash MLC database, uh, it, it, it usually works. Um, I think um, I can't I can't remember the exact number of ISWC that the HFA database has, but it's it's quite significant. So we can use ISWC to find the works. If we find them, we can actually return you the HFA song code and we can also um, compare um, your submission with, with the HFA work. It's not as foolproof as using the HFA song code, but it's, it's one avenue that we're using to maximize the, the, the return on, on, on using the DQI. Um, so, so yes, if, if you don't have HFA song code, ISWC is, is the, the next best thing. Uh, thanks, Raf. Uh, Stephen, uh, this may uh, question I think perhaps for both you and Raf. If a profile, um, I'm, I'm assuming that means a music mo music maestro profile has more than ten thousand works, um, should we be doing the export in smaller batches um, instead of a single export? It, it, Stephen, is there, is, is there any is there any do you have any suggestions or hints as to how somebody might best achieve that? Yeah, I mean that's that's down to your your way you create your profile. So you'd have to, you know, if you if you do a profile and it turns out to be a huge number of songs, then you'll have to think about how you br you break that down. For example, splitting it into a song code range or just doing the ones that have earned income, those kind of things. Um, and I I don't know um, so what the whether that um, 
ten thousand limit is an absolute limit, or whether that's a suggestion and you could it's, probably maybe go with more. It's a guideline. Uh, it's definitely not a. Uh, but I mean, d d definitely, if you are doing that many, you really should be using SFTP. Um, yeah. uh, you know, that, that that will not email nicely. No, uh, that will get rejected by mail servers most likely. Okay, but yeah, on, on the music maestro side, it's down to you. You kind of. Um, um, creating your profiles and and, pre and seeing how many songs you come up with and then maybe thinking about okay well that's 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 going to be too many i need to break this down um, break this down a bit more thank you uh another question how can we validate that all songs from a profile were exported is there a way to see a count raf i think i'm right in saying that the summary report that we give back includes a count of the number of works that were submitted is that correct uh, yes but I, I, I suspect the question was more around how do you how can you make sure that the, the data you wanted exported is actually the data that you exported that that's how I read the question um, so so yes so we, we, we will keep a track of the count of how many works we're validating um, I don't know if in Music Maestro, when you export um, works from a profile, you can see how many works were included in that profile. You can see how many works were in the profile, but we're not storing. We're not storing any. We're not storing at this point, at least, the fact that it was that a, a, a song has been sent. So we're not doing the whole kind of CWR thing of, of storing history. Um, and another question was about, um, you know, about loading acknowledgement files. So at least at this point, maybe if people are, are kind of very keen on on making further changes, is that it is a it is you take you create your profile and it in ex, does the export. So there's no kind of there's no history. The and when you get the um, files back, if you've got, for example, you'll be provided with ISWCs and work no, numbers you don't have in your system. Um, then there isn't going to be like an MLC load. Those can be loaded through Maestro Data Gateway. So you can use this, the song, um, the song imports to update the ISWCs and the work number import to update work numbers. So at, the, at least at this at least moment, we haven't. There isn't the, the, those kind of built-in things that you have for CWR where you store the history and you load acknowledgement files. But we can see. Um, see what demand there is for, for, for doing and something more on both of those sides. Um, I would suggest maybe thinking about when you're doing the work, maybe using um, categories. So you, well, if you kind of, if you, if you are break, if you are kind of focusing on certain works and um, um, you, and you, and you want to keep a track of what you sent and what you haven't sent um, I would suggest um, when you when you send when you create a profile and, and create the file that you then use a full command to add a category to that particular to the song so that you can you've kind of got some kind of um, way of checking um, and also maybe as well using profiles and categories to do some to, to marks for the ones that you need maybe need to come back and check later um, but yeah at this point at least there's no there's no kind of um, there's no history stored automatically and there's no um, load process. So you're looking at the existing processes that exist in Music Maestro. So Maestro Data Gateway to load information and categories if you want to um, tag songs. Uh, all right. Uh, just being conscious of time, uh, I hope we, uh, there are a couple of questions that we haven't quite got to. Uh, our apologies uh, for not hitting those um, but uh, if you would like to follow up on those questions uh, drop us an email at the uh, at the address that I've repeated about 73 times now so I'm sure you're familiar with it but data.quality at the mlc.com um, and we'll be happy to, uh, to, to help you uh, with any of those questions. Uh, otherwise, I hope this was helpful uh, for everybody. I hope to be hearing from many, if not all of you, uh, very shortly and that files will begin to flood in. Um, and I think it just remains for us, uh, you know, on behalf of myself and Raf and Stephen to thank you all very much for your time and your great questions um, and uh, look forward to your participation. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>